2024 YR4 is a asteroid that was discovered in late December of last year. It's somewhere on the order. We think it's probably about 50 to 60 meters across. It is a asteroid that has the potential for hitting the Earth. We're keeping a very close eye on it because right now, we have so little observation data of it that we cannot remove Earth from the area of uncertainty or basically the big space where we expect the asteroid to travel through as it goes by the Earth in December of 2032. So we've got eight, uh, eight ish, less than eight years now uh, to kind of look at and gather what we can about this asteroid and see what we can do. So Back last Sunday, the chance at that time, the probability was 1 in 71 or 1.4%. Throughout the week, it has actually increased, which is, I don't want to say like unexpected, but also like, huh, look at that. There, there it goes up. Um, yesterday, it was at its peak, which was 1 in 42 chance or a 2.4% chance, chance of hitting the Earth. Today, it's dropped just a little bit, but it's still elevated compared to where it was for our last show. Today, it's a 1 in 45 chance, which is 2.2%. So we're, I guess we're up almost a full percent on on where we were last week. But it's, it's important to remember that we still have observations to do. So <laughs> at the moment, we cannot, obviously, so we can't really rule out an impact event at the moment. There's still enough time that we can, like, figure this out and have the time to maybe build a deflector if need be, basically build a dark mission and hit it really hard with enough time out. So we're just going to, we're going to kind of have to do this. The really big issue with it is that this is not a big asteroid and asteroids are really dark. If you go out and you look at like the tarmac of the road, imagine something that's four to five times darker than that. And that's what we're trying to look at from millions of kilometers away. So, yeah, this is uh, this is this is really tough. We're really only we really only have about six to eight weeks left for observations, even with the biggest telescopes here on Earth. And even then, we're still having issues seeing it because of how far away it is, how small, and how dark it is. Because that's just the nature of asteroids; they're dark. By the way, just to let everybody know, this is not to scale. Oh my God! It's totally to scale. Look at that. That's an extinction. That's a planet hitting our planet. That would that would blow the crust off and all the way down to the mantle. That That would destroy the Earth even before impact. Just the gravitational field ripping us apart. It just wouldn't end well. Yeah, this is not. That's bigger than our moon. We have to create a ring system of our oceans first. By the way, um, this this actually. I, I don't know where this simulation came from, but this actually is pretty close um, to the imp- the actual areas it would impact on the Earth. We're talking going all the way to the west, through uh, the Middle East, through Africa, into the Atlantic Ocean, just mm-hmm. off of South America. There, that's your potential impact area here on the Earth. And just to just to emphasize this, this is about sixty. We think it's about sixty meters. If it were to hit. This is what we call a city killer. So basically Mm -hmm. anything within a 50 kilometer radius would be obliterated by it. And if it were to land in the ocean, it's actually not big enough to generate a tsunami of of substantial size. Obviously it would still make, you know, waves that would be a couple meters in height at either at, at both the western shores of South America or the eastern shores of South America and the western shores of Africa. But it wouldn't be something that would... If it were to hit in the middle of nowhere, it wouldn't like it. Like this is not going to end all life on Earth, or this isn't going to cause a nuclear winter or anything like that. But obviously, still, we don't want this to hit. We want to prevent it from hitting the Earth if we can, because one, that's just a good. It's just good to do that, right? This would be a really great way to test out the technology and our ability to respond to it, and. We actually already are. You know, we have this thing called the Torino scale, which is what we use to measure the sort of threat level of near-Earth asteroids and potentially hazardous objects. And we're, we're at Torino level three with this object, which basically means, hey, 
astronomical community, we, we have something on our hands and we need to take a, a look at this. So right now, every telescope that we can use is dedicating their free time to trying to observe this asteroid. So that way we can get a better idea with it. In a couple months, it's going to be positioned well enough that we should be able to use JDUB to take a look at it as well and get more information out of it and get better positional data with it as well. But even then, there's still there's probably going to be a significant enough margin for error that we need to kind of figure it out. And 2028 is when it comes by again. When it comes by again in 2028, it's going to be you know several million kilometers away. So it's not a very close pass like this year was. So it's not really going to help us out. Yeah, it's this is. This is an interesting situation that's happening right now. It's definitely not, don't don't panic, but do know that the right people at the right places are doing all the right things to try to figure out what they need to do next. Can we send up a giant parachute to slow, like a solar sail to, to slow it down? Uh, so that doesn't work. Also something that won't work um, as well, uh, Sharpies. You can't put a Sharpie and draw where you want it to actually be at for it to work um, with it. Oh, Daddy, you said solar sail. I'm sorry. I heard parachute. Did you say parachute or solar sail? I said both. both. Okay, so parachute not going to work, right? Because, like, air and everything. But a solar sail, if you <laughs> got it up there with enough time, yeah, <laughs> you, right. you very well could. But at the same time, like, that solar sail would probably have need to have been on there, like, now. Something else I find really interesting about this one in particular is there's only one other object that has been this risky uh since we've been tracking this stuff, Apophis. Yes. Apophis, which, yeah. Apophis um, hit actually level four on the Torino scale before, which was basically like, hey, we need to really take a look at this. But it was only that way for a couple of days before it dropped back down. It was mm -hmm. so far. And that was the risk of it hitting in 2029. There's still a risk that it could hit yes. you know, farther in the future, but not as big of a risk as they thought for those couple of days. Yeah, I think it's in like the 22nd century when they think that it's got the risk <laughs> of getting or something. So we'll let Starfleet deal with that. We're going to you know, keep an eye on it and try to figure it out and, and see what we need to do. But also, I, I am fairly confident that they'll be able to figure uh, figure it out. So, I mean, that's, that's what they do. We know from DART that a kinetic impactor will work. Like, we did that with DART. DART was supposed to change the orbit of Dimorphos, the the moon of Didymos that we hit by like 30 seconds. Like that was the target goal. And they did it by something like half an hour in that in that impact. So we know that that not only does the kinetic impactor work, it works really, really well. So we'll have to see. And just just to let you know about how like confident we are that something like DART would work this asteroid 2024 YR4 is smaller than Didymos was or is like we didn't blow up Didymos it's still there uh, right or no excuse me Dimorphos so the we think that with Didymos. like a kinetic impactor like DART we would actually be able to hit it even harder and, and move it with even more velocity at that point but there's also something that comes with that too that I was actually talking with about someone at Griffith yesterday which is that you got to make sure that you hit it in a way that is sort of like politically okay, because you don't want to knock it in a way that causes it to tr that like you can knock it and you can make sure that it doesn't, that it ends up missing the earth, like hit it with enough that it really does hit the earth. But like, what if it, what if that input, that line of potential impact has to go through China and then through Russia before it finally is like off of the surface of the earth? Or what if you have to send it like down through Australia or something like that? Like, do we have to ask the permission of these countries to be able to do something like that? Mm. We were like, huh, like politically, you have to think about that, too. This is going to be an interesting <laughs> couple of years. If it's we can't going to be fun to see the uh, the space uh, race when we have five different probes from different nations. <laughs> yeah. And then also, like, you know, like what a great. What is what a great start to a sci-fi story, you know? Uh, the, this rogue <laughs> nation decides to knock an asteroid in the wrong direction after it's already been knocked to, you know, try and steer it towards their enemy or something, you know? Like that that would be pretty funny. So, 
Ika asks, is, is this a hard rock, uh, hard rock, so, hard solid rock or block of metal? It spins too fast to be a rubble pile. So that's a great question, Ika. Uh, it is too small for us to determine whether it's a solid object or a rubble pile, but you did bring up the fact that it does spin fast. It is, it is a fast, what we call a fast rotator, which means that it rotates very fast. It literally goes around once every, I believe it's 19 and a half minutes, which is really fast for an asteroid. So most of them take you know, several days, if not at least a vast majority of the day for it to go around. So we'll have to, we'll have to see. J-Dub may be able to, to look at it and figure that out, but right now uh, we don't know just because of the fact that it's outbound and it's tiny and it's really tough. To tell, we we do know that looking at the way the light curve is, or basically how much light we see coming from it as it's rotating, we do have a, a solid guess that it is actually elongated, so that it's not like a spherical uh, shape. It's actually maybe like a like sort of like a baguette or something like that. That's really the only shape I could think of to describe it as. But again. Uh, the, really, the only ways to do this are to get radar info on it. So basically aim a big radio telescope at it, blast it with some radio waves and get that back like radar, or fly a spacecraft out directly to it. And as as I was told by a coworker yesterday, the only time that it's going to get close enough to get radar data from it will be when it is inbound in 2032. So basically when it's, you know, would it would be months away from impact or basically too late if you want to fly something direct with it then you know you gotta you gotta launch that to, to actually go get it and i don't i mean i think we could do it if we really wanted to that that requires the the political will to pull that off so so arecibo was pretty big right it was it was what a thousand feet across and then fast uh which is in china their massive radio telescope that they have, those are still not big enough because of the fact that this is such a small object. This is 60 meters. This is not big. You know, this is not, this is not even the size of a, of a soccer field or, excuse me, football pitch. This is really tough to find. So, yeah, we got to – we gotta. there's a lot of work that needs to be done. That's why everybody who can is doing the work right now to try to knock everything down as best we can. And I will say that, that – People have already put in papers or excuse me, proposals and have had them approved for time on JDUB. So it's not like, oh, we might point JDUB at it and, and see what we can get. No, like hmm. that time has been set aside and we are going to do observation of it. So that that will tell, hopefully give us better ideas to what it's made out of, better ideas to what shape it is, better ideas of its size and better idea of its position as well. That will really help out. So probably going to have to wait until later this year for the statistics to get a bit better. 